Okay, we're gonna go over question six on that seventh edition practice exam for brokers. This one's a long question. I like to call these confusing questions. So a buyer agreed to purchase a billing site for $17,000. It's irrelevant to this question. She gives a broker a good faith deposit of $11,000 in cash and agreed to close the property within 60 days and pay the balance in cash as well. It doesn't matter, but we shouldn't be taking a cash deposit. Not saying we can't, but we really shouldn't be taking a cash deposit. The sale was contingent on the buyer receiving acceptable soil tests from an engineering firm and determining that the land was also allowed to be used basically to put a mobile home on it. The broker should do what? Well, first of all, A, should not have written a contingency for land use. No, you should absolutely write a contingency for soil tests, land use, anything when you're buying vacant land you have to make sure that you do all the tests and all your due diligence so that you don't fall under this remediation problem. You need to be, you can't do that innocent landowner claim we talked about a long time ago. So number one, A is wrong. A, we should always write a contingency or have some type of clause in there to protect our buyer. B, violate four, chapter 475, by accepting a cash deposit greater than $10,000. No, you can accept a cash deposit. I don't suggest taking a cash deposit. In fact, you should probably be wiring that type of money. Now, when it goes in an account, anything over $10,000 does have to be reported, so we need to make sure that we're reporting that properly. But it's not a violation of 475. It's not a criminal problem. I have to worry about that. C, it says, must place deposit as trust account by the end of the next business day. Well, that's not true, right? The agent has to give it to the broker on day one, the next business day. The broker then has up to the third business day to deposit in their trust account or the trust account of the closing agent, the attorney. All right, so end of the next business day is absolutely false. You can do that, but it's not required to be done then. The last one says must report the transaction to the IRS on form A300. Form A Anything over $10,000 has to be reported to the IRS because it's gonna come back and get you in the event of an audit. You have to report this because they wanna make sure that it's anti-money laundering, et cetera. You have to report any transaction, cash $10,000 or more. So the irrelevance to this question is this, right? The main thing here in this question is this. They're giving you all this other information to confuse you. I call these long questions confuse your questions. They're trying to confuse you and throw all these weird things out at you to make sure you understand the concept. The concept here is greater than $10,000 required to report to the IRS. That's what they're trying to get you. It doesn't matter anything else here. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at questions. What is the question actually asking? What concept are they covering? We're not talking about escrow deposits here. We're not talking about contingencies here. It's in the question, but the real thing we're talking about is reporting this cash transaction. Hope that helps.